grace, mercy from God our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Good morning and welcome. For those who don't know me, I am Nigel, and on behalf of the Reverend Duncan and the Ashbourne Ministry Team, it's my joy to welcome you this morning to the Church of St Mary and St Barlock here in Norbury. It's one of the jewels in the crown of the Ashbourne group of parishes. And here we are today, this morning, surrounded by some of the earliest stained glass, produced way back in the 13th century. And I'm joined here in church by Mike Warner, and our virtual servant will come from Linda Herbert, both of whom are lay readers in our ministry team, and it's a joy to have them part of this service. Let us begin our service in coming before God in our prayer of preparation. We say together, Almighty oh, God, God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commands, and to live in love and peace with all. In a short period of silence, let us call to mind those things that we have done that we ought not to have done, and those things that we ought to have done, but have left undone. We say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour, in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate thought. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us stand and say together the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest and, and peace, peace with his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God, God and Father, we worship you. We give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world and have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. The prayer of the Church for today, the third Sunday after Trinity. Almighty God, you have broken the tyranny of sin and have sent the Spirit of your Son into our hearts, whereby we call you Father. Give us grace to dedicate our freedom to your service, that we and all creation may be brought into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. In our reading this morning, when Hananiah delivers a hopeful prophecy about the future, Jeremiah appears to agree with him. He points out, however, that the future alone will prove the truth of a prophet's words. 
The reading is taken from Jeremiah chapter 28 verses 5 to 9. Then the prophet Jeremiah spoke to the prophet Hananiah in the presence of the priests and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord fulfill the words that you have prophesied and bring back to this place from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles. But listen now to this word that I speak in your hearing and in the hearing of all the people. The prophets who precede you and me from ancient times prophesied war, famine and pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesies peace, when the word of the prophet comes true, then it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet. This is the word of the Lord. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to, to thee, O Lord. Lord. He who receives me, you receive me. And he who receives me, receives him who sent me. He who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet, shall receive a prophet's reward. And he who receives a righteous man, in the name of a righteous man, shall receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives one of these little ones only a cup of cold water in the name of a disciple, assuredly, I say to you, he shall by no means lose his reward. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In today's Gospel reading, we hear of the importance Jesus places upon welcoming one another, so much so that Jesus himself wishes to be remembered in the welcome we give. In fact, Jesus says to his disciples, whoever welcomes you, welcomes me. So I thought about how I welcome folk and whether the manner in which I welcome folk reflects my Christian faith and I have to admit, when I really stop to think about it, I probably don't offer more than a reserved, welcoming smile and a few words of polite greeting. If I'm welcoming someone into my home, I generally start by offering a cup of tea. Offering traditional hospitality is my go-to method of greeting. And I really don't know what to do if I have a guest who doesn't want a cup of tea, and if, heaven forbid, I run out of tea or cake, what am I to do? Should I hide behind the sofa? Now, less reserved people welcome <coughs> one another with a kiss, and this is a very nice thing to do. However, I very rarely kiss, and when I do, I invariably get it wrong and we bump heads or I end up with a beard burn or worse still, a sloppy, wet kiss. So no, polite air kissing is not for me. Which is quite worrying as the Apostle Paul exhorts us to greet one another with a holy kiss. And he doesn't just do it in one place, but two for it's found in 2 Corinthians 13, 12 and Romans 16, 16. So St. Paul would clearly find me a bit stuffy and standoffish. So I decided to have a little look around to find out how folks from different cultures greet one another. This is what I found. Italian, French and Spanish speaking countries like to welcome one another with an air kiss. But it gets complicated because not everyone kisses everyone and sometimes people only air kiss folk they're in a relationship with. 
and depending where you are and who you're welcoming, it may be one, two, three or four air kisses. So, as it's so complicated, I decided this method of greeting definitely wasn't and isn't for me. Now, history doesn't record what St. Paul meant by a holy kiss, but I kind of think that living in the Roman world, he would be familiar with air kissing. But as we're living in the midst of a pandemic, the notion of greeting one another in such a way is a non-starter. So I decided to look a little farther to see how other faith groups welcome one another. And I came across this little known Tibetan greeting, which started by Buddhist monks and is used as a greeting and sign of respect. And it involves sticking out your tongue. There again, though, I thought this might cause some consternation with face masks and everything, and so decided that this might not be a good option either. So then I thought about New Zealand and the hacker, but being in a wheelchair, I kind of thought it would be somewhat difficult, especially as they might expect me to play rugby after it. So I thought that option too was best avoided. So then I looked back at the Gospels and found that whenever Jesus greeted someone, he did so in peace. Peace is the hallmark of Christ's welcome. And whenever we come into his presence, peace is the lasting result. Jesus has the capacity to bring peace into the most troubled of situations. He calms the storm. He heals the sick. He brings justice to the downtrodden. In short, the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ transforms lives. And so I urge you to welcome him into your heart today and then greet one another in peace. Amen. We stand as we declare the faith we share. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe, we believe and trust in him. him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, <laughs> who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe, believe and, and trust, trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We, we believe, believe and trust in him. him. This is the faith of the Church. This, this is our faith. We, we believe, believe and trust in one God, God Father, Son and, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So, let us pray to God our Father, in union with Christ and in the power of the Spirit. Let us first pray for all those working today, our health workers, carers and cleaners, the frontline emergency service workers, those in retail and transport, and the many who stand by others in these difficult times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our ministers and church leaders. As the situation eases up, give them wisdom and courage to see how our buildings can be used once more. But we also thank God that our church has kept going in our homes and in our hearts. We long to come together again to worship we pray, let common sense prevail. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so we pray for the church throughout our world, much of our widespread family facing far more difficult times than ourselves. We pray for courage, wisdom and fortitude at this time, that the church, the people of God, might truly know Christ and so know God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us now bring before God those we know and love and can now hope to see again soon. Our families, many widespread. Our friends, who we can once again sit down with and have a real chat with. We thank God for the technology that's kept so many of us in touch and has taken away some of the sense of isolation. But Lord, you know we need contact. Lord, in your mercy, hear our help. So Lord, we face challenges ahead, but we pray that as we move forward, we will be guided and strengthened by your Spirit. We pray for the Alpha Course, its leaders and those who are attending. We pray for Ozzy's Kitchen, soon to restart as a takeaway service. And Lord, Strengthen those friendships that have developed during this lockdown. So, merciful Father, accept Set these prayers, prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We stand for the peace. God is love, and those who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. If you are together with a member of your household, then do offer one another a sign of God's peace, be it a handshake, a hug, or a kiss. If you're on your own, then take great comfort that God's peace is all around you. So let us offer one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Whilst I consecrate this bread and wine here in church, in obedience to our Lord's command, if you have bread and wine with you at home, perhaps you'd like to place it on a table in front of you. The Lord is here. The Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. And may you write so to Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His dying and raising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you, with saints and angels praising you and saying, 
Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit that broken bread and wine out poor may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So far, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ is alive. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ life will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, for honour and glory only. O oh, loving Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. Nigel, the body of Christ, broken for you. Amen.
whose beauty is beyond our imagining, and whose power we cannot comprehend. Show us your glory as far as we can grasp it, and shield us from knowing more than we can bear, until we look upon you without fear. Through Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. Amen. We say together, Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declares your love, gave us grace and opened the gates of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We who the Spirit us give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Whilst the government and the House of Bishops have stated that we may begin to open our churches for collective worship, please note that it is may, not must. But really our ability to do so depends upon many factors, not least the importance of minimising risk to those church helpers who might clean our churches, but also observing the social distancing requirements of those who may wish to come to church. More news about that in due course. Meantime, I am pleased and relieved to say that St Oswald's, as our mother church of Ashbourne, is, as of this week, open for private prayer on Wednesdays and Sunday afternoons between 2pm and 6pm. But please remember that you can stay connected with us at the church during the week by logging on to our website, ashbournechurch.org.uk. And there you'll find the weekly Pew News and much more. 
And as usual, we will hold our virtual coffee time on Zoom. So if you go to the front page of our website, you'll find the link. Just give it a click at 11.30 this morning, and we'll see you all there. So now as we come to close our service, the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and those you love and for whom you pray, this day and always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the, in the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.